Okay, greetings everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, welcome to the Don't Panic Pivot webinar. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your time and attention and are excited to share a few leadership and strategy tips that can help your organization pivot during these uncertain times. Here at Becker Digital, we know that organizations all across the globe are facing many challenges related to the pandemic. Current events are unprecedented and something that the vast majority of us did not see coming. Hannah and I both know, want to let you know that we are here for you and our agency is available to help your organization navigate these uncertain times. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us following this webinar with questions. While the next few weeks and months will be challenging, we can get through what's yet to come together. In today's webinar, we'll be covering effective leadership tips during times of uncertainty, developing a human-centric digital strategy, crisis-approved social media guidelines, and building connections through virtual events. We know that change is scary and that many of us have had to change pretty much everything that we do over the past few weeks. I wanna encourage you to keep an open mind as we go through this webinar. Your organization is still operating. It just may need to operate a little differently than it was a few months ago. All of our suggestions are actionable and do not require a completely new strategy, just an adjustment of the established strategies. So a quick background on our company, Becker Digital is a service disabled veteran owned small business that provides marketing and public relations services to corporations, government agencies and nonprofit organizations. The focus of our work is to organizations to go beyond the screen and connect with their communities in an engaging, meaningful way. Here's a snapshot of our agency's capabilities. We provide advertising, communications, graphic design, marketing, PR, social media, and web design services to organizations in a variety of industries and sectors. You can learn more about our offerings on our website or by reaching out to us at the end of this webinar. I'm Jeremy Becker, CEO of Becker Digital. I'm a retired U.S. Army officer and an Operation Enduring Freedom Combat veteran. I have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from the University of Mississippi and a master's degree in business administration from Florida Institute of Technology. Effective leadership during times of crisis has been a theme throughout my military and civilian career, be it in a war zone or a boardroom. And I look forward to sharing some insights with you in a few minutes. Hannah Becker is our creative director, and she'll be leading the last half of today's webinar, sharing digital strategy expertise. Hannah holds a bachelor's degree from Mississippi State University, a graduate certificate in nonprofit leadership, and a master's degree in business administration from the Florida Institute of Technology. She previously taught computer science and economics at multiple universities and has helped organizations in a variety of industries, including agriculture, government, healthcare, and military, adopt a human-centric digital strategy. Hannah currently serves on the Military Family Advisory Network's Advisory Board in Washington, DC, and volunteers as a career mentor with Hiring Our Heroes. Before we dive into digital strategy, I wanted to take a few minutes to discuss leadership strategies for times of crisis, because without effective leadership, even the best of strategies is essentially worthless. First, a quick reminder about leadership. Effective leadership starts and ends with people. People are the most important part of your organization's leadership strategy and strategy implementation. And while tech gets a lot of hype in our digital era, it's important to remember that digital tools come and go. And digital tools, even ones touting automation features, have to be implemented and assessed by people. Another important reminder is that trust, trust of your consumers, constituents, and or donors, 
goes beyond technology. An app cannot in and of itself establish and maintain trust. Leaders can use technology to help them build community trust. That's what Hannah's going to go over later. But technology in and of itself is limited by the people leveraging it. And finally, people are the determining factor in your organization's success during these uncertain times. Don't get caught up in the latest tech trend or gimmick. Keep your focus on your people. So here are six leadership tips for times of crisis. Communication. The first point I'd like to address is effective communication. Effective communication is built on trust. Consistency is key to building trust and an efficient means of information flow between leaders and their teams. Being strong on principle is important to consider as well. This lets people know where you stand. It helps to create a feeling of confidence among associates. Communication needs to be two-way as well. Without compromising or sacrificing your organizational mission or basic issues, there needs to be an atmosphere in which you can hear and consider the views or the interests of other people in your team. Being kind of a dictator that commands with no regards to how others are receiving information is a sure way to find yourself in a situation in which your team has no idea what is going on and may question whether you do as well. And furthermore, information needs to be timely. Bad news, bad news doesn't get better with time. I've uh, been in certain situations before in which case I could have prevented or at least mitigated catastrophic outcomes if I'd had received bad news, uh, albeit unpleasant news that I definitely did not want, but would regardless anyways uh, have had to deal with at some point sooner. And second, consideration in crisis leadership is what we referred to on the battlefield as friction. This is where even simple things become extremely difficult because now there is so much more pressure, kind of like when you rub your hands together in the old science class observation we had as kids. And this pressure can tend to come from one point during a crisis. Expect that nothing goes according to plan. It's almost like squeezing a bar of wet soap or hurting cats. <laughs> Put pressure on a subject and it can be difficult to predict, right? So how do we handle this friction? Well, for one, flexibility in your approach. Not to mean going with the flow, but realizing that unpredictability of an outcome is a call sign of the moment. Also, speed in your assessment and decision-making process is essential. And once that course of action is decided upon, Carrying that course of action out with intensity and audacity can be the difference between success or failure. Third, be educated in your tasks as a leader. You really need to know to be prepared mentally to know what the next move, the next step will be. A step-by-step -step approach is very effective at managing the fog of the battlefield, so to speak is how best to effectively manage a chaotic situation. Know what the next step is. If a specific situation happens, then based on analysis, what is the best first action to take to address it? And how will it set you up for the next step? In essence, what do we do when we don't yet know what to do other than to abandon ourselves to panic? Also, plans for managing chaotic, fast-moving, multi-stepped events are best made as multiple phases, broken down into multiple steps. This leaves as little room for uncontrolled time or untimely responses to rapidly developing situations as possible. A, first point, a fourth point I'd like to make here in crisis leadership is presence of mind. You can't lead if you can't control yourself. Be cool-headed. Learn the facts. Establish the truths. Stand up and be heard. Those who do will be followed. Then be certain to preserve unity. Respect and distrust develop disunity in a team, and disunity will invite defeat. Recognize that other departments and functions other than your own are important, and always be sure to treat their members with the respect that is their due. You need to avoid being a diehard as well. 
don't be the last to identify a truth or the last to adopt the new. Even though leaders are often called upon to perform the harder right over the easier wrong, we need to avoid being uh, avoid sheer bullheadedness. And by bullheaded, I mean being a person with very determined ideas, many of them unsound, to which they may cling to with more than usual tenacity. Also, make sure you're not a timid soul. Don't be afraid to put your views out there for consideration or to take issue with a point or to point out a fault just out of fear of causing annoyance. A timid person on the edge of discussion may possess the skills necessary to reason and arrive at a sound conclusions, but if lacking the fortitude to express or defend them, will not have much impact no matter what your, their position. And just remember that new idea or that as yet unheard solution may be the one that can bring your organization success. But on the flip side, don't be a know-it-all either. As ineffective as a timid soul leader is, so is a know-it-all. <laughs> you know uh, that one, possibly that person with the loudly expressed glib answer and a solution for everything with or without knowledge of the subject or time for consideration. This is even more dangerous. So neither the timid leader or the know-it-all will have much influence on history and the know-it-all's legacy will typically be negative. Aggressive advancement of hasty conclusions may sound plausible and be adopted, but may only develop much worse issues later. And be sure to avoid tunnel vision. This is where we get so focused on something we fail to observe as much as we should. When things get rough, we tend to get overwhelmed and our focus narrows. Leaders need to keep a view from multiple perspectives. Look at a plan from a subordinate's point of view or from a client's point of view. Put yourself in their shoes. If it all of a sudden looks like a not so smart thing to do, or if you yourself would be reluctant to do it if directed, find another plan. Never expect others to do something you wouldn't do. And this leads us to the final point. Lead from the front. This is more than a death wish. <laughs> Leading from the front doesn't mean being the first one to dive headfirst off into despair and destruction or you know, go down with the ship. Leading from the front means to be willing to share in whatever the consequence may be of an action. Your team's success is your success. Their failures are your failures. So those are a few tips on leadership during times of crisis that I gleaned from experience and through my education as a military officer and have proven best practices for the handling leadership situations that may be chaotic, critical, possibly deadly or destructive or otherwise challenging. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Hannah, our creative director, who's going to go much more in depth with digital strategy. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, that was a great overview of some leadership challenges that uh, we've been hearing from organizations um, in the community. And I know that um, there's just a lot of uncertainty around what's yet to come as far as challenges for our organizations. So thank you so much for giving us that overview. Um, so I'm going to uh, dive into digital strategy and uh, talk about how uh, we can address the challenges that the pandemic has presented for our organization um, through digital strategy. So uh, when people think about developing and implementing a digital strategy, they tend to get tunnel vision, which Jeremy mentioned, around the tech aspect of this approach. So they spend a lot of time reviewing which apps are out there, what cool features are available, you know, how much they can jazz up their social media posts through editing software, um, which all those things are great, but if the digital content that you're pushing out is missing, you know, the human touch, um, the ability to connect, relate, um, it's, it's going to flounder. 
So while technology is certainly an essential part of an effective digital strategy, um, it's, it's not the most important. And I would encourage you uh, to kind of put it in that second step or that second phase of how you're approaching your digital strategy, reserving the first part um, for the humans, who will be implementing it, who will be seeing it, who you're trying to connect with. So, um, as we all know, uh, you know, how connected people feel to an organization, how much they trust an organization, and how the organization, you know, positively impacts their lives, those things are a lot more important than, you know, even the um, cleverest of advertising campaigns. Um, so when we're developing a digital strategy, you know, focusing on the human, not just tech trends, but who will be seeing it, who will be implementing it, how we can improve their lives and really connect um, should really be the, the, the foundation that, you know, the next few slides are built off of. So the reason for this is, is really twofold. Um, you know, why human-centric strategies are so much more effective. Um, so people crave relationships human contact and I know that's something that all of us who are social distancing right now are acutely aware of um, digital tools like email social media videos they provide the opportunity for people to connect with other people and organizations and these interactions they have the potential to build and foster long-term relationships between the organization and you know its customers its clients its potential members um, even if we are currently, you know, under a stay at home order. So I, I know that uh, the pandemic and the social distancing have created a lot of new barriers for organizations that were relying on a lot of in person um, contact. And for the moment, you know, we do have to kind of improvise and adapt with that. And digital strategy is an awesome way to do that. Uh, the second reason that kind of remaining human centric in your digital approach is so important is that digital literacy is really uh, lacking in America. So in 2019, the Pew Research Center conducted a survey on just basic technology application and knowledge, and only 40% of responding adults in the U.S. answered the main questions like these foundational tech uh, concepts correctly. So digital literacy rates, they appeared to be correlated, which probably isn't surprising to most of us to education levels and age, with younger, more educated respondents being more digitally literate. Um, what that means for us as we're planning our digital strategy over the next few months is that we need to know, we need to meet our, um, you know, prospective clients, prospective members, uh, where they are. So just because a app or a trend in technology is, is very cool and popular, um, like we're seeing with TikTok right now uh, with younger demographics, doesn't mean that that will be effective in reaching, you know, your senior citizen market. So when you're crafting a customized digital strategy, um, really focus on first, know who they are, know your target market, who you're trying to reach, you know, really put, um, get a good handle on that and, and feel, you know, what their needs are, what tech they're, they're accessing. Maybe they're just on Facebook. Maybe they're all over Instagram. Um, maybe, you know, an email newsletter is the extent of um, tech, you know, tech accessibility they're comfortable with. Um, I know for most of us professionals, we all work with technology all the time, even if you're not in the technology industry. So we tend to kind of lose sight of that. So when you're thinking about your digital strategy that you're going to build out over the next few months, um, keep, keep, you know, the people, people in mind. Um, 
you know, just uh, once an organization has identified their audience, their audience's needs, and how the organization can help support them, then the marketing team or agency, if you partner with us, can work to identify the the social media apps, the um, software programs that can really help facilitate connections because the in-person opportunities just aren't there right now. So on to pandemic approved social media tips. So coronavirus is pretty much the only thing anyone's talking about online right now. Um, outside of the Tiger King. Uh, the virus in the social media sense has truly gone viral. And um, social media managers or organizational leaders that are responsible for social media, they may find themselves on the front lines of digital conversations regarding the pandemic. If you've ever perused a Facebook comment thread regarding the pandemic, you know that such conversations can get a little dicey. So personal attacks, political debates, and somehow even religious arguments, they tend to surface uh, during times of crisis um, on, on, and, and they can even dominate the online discussion. So moderating all of this when it comes to your organization's social media page, that can present quite the crisis communications dilemma. Um, Additionally, many of the in-person events that our organizations really relied on for social media content, um, so for those pictures, the videos, um, they've been canceled. So organizational leaders may have to get creative when it comes to what they post because there can only be so many Facebook photos of your work from home selfies or the outer space themed Zoom background that you found. Um, we go into a lot more detail on some content inspiration and where you can find content for social media over on the Becker Digital blog. But just a few quick ideas uh, for social media content for your organization right now when you're kind of stuck at home. Um, are things like educational opportunities, like webinars, a fun facts or history about the organization and its people, um, inspiring interviews with team members and virtual events, even like um, virtual scavenger hunts, photo challenges, and even social media bingo games. So we kind of have to think outside the box right now when it comes to social media content. Um, if you are managing an organization's social media channels during the pandemic, I, here are just kind of six tips uh, for doing that, kind of some guidelines on what to post and what not to post. Um, so don't just let the scheduled post roll. So if you scheduled your organization's Facebook posts, last month before, you know, we were all under a stay at home order, um, that, that may not be relevant for today because times have changed, right? So reevaluate previously scheduled content for relevancy and sensitivity. Um, I would encourage you to consider creating new social media content that's in line with current events. Just a good rule of thumb, a positive, uplifting content that inspires hope and unity that's evergreen that never gets old that never that's never off color so um it, that can be a really good place to start uh secondly i would encourage you to not post about or to don't post coronavirus themed memes or jokes i know we've all seen these it's given the, the, you know, the state of our world at this time, you know, that that type of content is just not funny and such an insensitive content, it can really reflect poorly on the organization whose content you're curating. So I know with social media, a lot of us um, 
We tend to let our hair down. It's a place to be informal um, or tends to be. But during this time, I would really encourage you to, you know, think about how that could, you know, keep the tone in mind when you're writing copy and, you know, consider eliminating sarcasm on these topics. Um, it is a tragic time with a lot of grief and a lot of, um, a lot of worry. So um, it's an opportunity while very challenging. It's an opportunity for our organizations to really extend, uh, you know, hope. And um, I would encourage you to prioritize that. And thirdly, if you post about coronavirus, which is totally appropriate for many organizations that are either, you know, they uh, represent a community or they um, are in healthcare, you know, I would encourage you to check your sources when you're posting about this, which we all should be doing that anyway. But um, you won't really want to make sure this information is accurate and reliable. The best source for pandemic related content in the US right now is the Center for Disease Control. So you can visit that website and just make sure that you know everything's in line with the most updated um, public information. Fourthly, uh, you you guys have probably all already experienced this, but um, Prepare for social media followers, your organization's social media followers, for their online behavior to change because more and more people are at home and many in-person events have been canceled. So optimal posting times for your organization's accounts last month, they may not be the same this month. The same with social media engagement rates. Um, you know, instead of, folks being gone on Friday night or, you know, going out to eat or being at their, you know, kids soccer game on Saturday morning, they're at home and they're online, which provides an awesome opportunity for organizations to connect with them. Um, so it's just a good idea to reevaluate you know, when your social media followers are online, what optimal times are for, for them being online, and um, you can access this information within your organization's social media account, uh, their insights. Fifth, we want to remain engaged with our social media followers through post comments. So engagement is wonderful when it comes to social media. And, and when I say engagement, um, you know, think of a two-way conversation. So you post something on Facebook for your organization, someone comments on it, you know, you reply, you further the conversation. Uh, however, if you were asked, if your organization is asked pandemic-related questions and you're not you know, a federal agency or an agency with authority to speak on this, like our county health departments, do not provide unqualified answers off the cuff. So if, if you're getting questions about the pandemic and your organization's not an authorized agency for this, or it's not a, you know, not subject matter experts on pandemics and epidemiology, just suggest that the commenter reference the CDC's latest recommendations. And finally, our sixth tip um, for managing social media during a pandemic is to identify ways that your organization can use its social media reach to support the community. So examples of this are things like an art studio offering free art classes via Facebook Live for school children, a nonprofit sharing free meal delivery service options, or restaurant chefs streaming easy to make recipes on YouTube. Um, these things may, we may have not considered doing these things, you know, two months ago when everyone was out and about, and, um, but things have changed. And so the content, kind of our content inspiration sources may be a little different and that's okay. These are very unusual times. Um, 
we're going to talk more about virtual events, but we do have kind of a guide on hosting virtual events um, on our blog. So if that's something that's of interest to you, it goes way more in depth and you can kind of go step by step with that. Because I know virtual events can be kind of overwhelming, especially when everything's so up in the air and you've got a lot going on. So experts tell us that coronavirus will be here for a while, which means our communities will remain acutely affected throughout the crisis. Um, it's important for organizations with social media reach to consider the potential impacts of their content during this time and to consistently evaluate content in light of recent developments with Great reach on social media comes great responsibility. So be sure to evaluate, research, and post judiciously. So another great way that organizations can pivot their outreach strategy to being more digitally approachable is to offer virtual events. So in comparison to in-person events, virtual events provide more accessibility options for attendees. And this can be a good way to improve your organization's inclusion measures and extend organizational outreach. So physical barriers like health concerns, caregiving responsibilities, travel expenses, these things can all negatively impact in-person event attendance but not so with virtual events. So virtual events, they're more accessible as they, they eliminate or, you know, all the would-be barriers to in-person events. So I know that it's, it, virtual events may have not been on your radar, depending on, you know, where your organization was and, and who they're serving. Um, but I would encourage you to, to put it on your radar and consider ways that your organization can connect with the community through virtual events, at least during you know, the next few weeks. Um, and one thing we've been hearing a lot uh, from clients is that you know, unexpected in-person event campaigns, they've left you know, organizational teams just kind of spinning because they're trying to decide you know what they should do. So do they cancel events for the summer? Do they create a virtual event as a substitute? Just kind of like what this is going to look like. I know if um, you're anything like me, I, I'm checking the news several times a day, trying to just get, get an idea of, um, you know, how long this is going to last, what it's going to look like, its potential impacts. And um, if you're checking the news as frequently as I am, you know, the, the forecast, the predictions, they're changing um, day to day. So it kind of an old adage that I would, uh, that I feel like really applies to organizational event planning this year is hope for the best, plan for the worst. So while we all may hope that the pandemic is quelled by this summer, even though recent medical speculation suggests otherwise, we should have a plan in place that includes virtual events as an alternative option to the in-person events that we might have to cancel. So it's easier to go ahead and plan for a virtual event backup than it is to throw one together the week of. Um, a little bit about promoting virtual events. So promoting a virtual event can be a little different from the promotion of an in-person event. And it's just a small difference, but it can make a big difference um, in regards to attendance. So while an in-person event, like a fundraising gala, an industry conference, they may focus all their promotional marketing on the event experience. So who you meet, where you stay, what you eat, um, you know, the whole, the whole experience, the event experience. Uh, promotional messaging around virtual events, it may be best focused on the value that the event provides for the attendee. So I know it's a small tweak, but it, it makes a big difference when it comes to virtual events. So examples of the kind of the value um, that virtual events could provide 
would be things like the impact a supporter can have on the community by attending a virtual fundraiser or the specific knowledge gains an attendee can expect from participating in a virtual conference. Um, these value propositions, they may differ slightly from the promotional messaging that would have been used for in-person events, but the slight tweaks in event marketing can really have a big difference in the virtual events reception. So when you are evaluating virtual event opportunities, I would really encourage you to think outside the box because there are only so many webinars like these that someone's going to attend. Um, your organization can offer, you can do a virtual panel with industry leaders. You can do fundraising virtual runs and walks that people can do, you know, at home. Um, social media fundraising campaigns on Facebook, uh, virtual hosting a virtual scavenger hunt, having, you know, some of your team members or, so, uh, you know, donors do a social media takeover. You can do live streaming and even host virtual networking opportunities. So one example of thinking out of the box that actually took place before, um, we were all practicing social distancing was by uh, the Department of Defense. So the US Navy in August of 2019, they launched their very first influencer campaign called Sailor Verse. And what they did, you can see on the um, computer image here um, is, is kind of the cover uh, image for this video campaign that the Navy had put out to increase or, or to enhance their recruiting efforts. So what they did was they partnered with three YouTube influencers um, and they brought them on board submarines and ships and let them videotape and get a behind the scenes look at, you know, the potential career options that joining the Navy can offer. So this was very, very different than you know, the military recruiting billboards and brochures that we've all seen. Um, it, it was a use of digital strategy in, in, with, with a very strong human touch. So people, the influencers, these YouTube stars that had millions of fans, they got to see something like you know, career opportunities with the Navy in a new light. So I know that most um, on the webinar do not have a submarine to show off while we're social distancing, but, um, you know, we can do that in a different scale as we're thinking about the next, the next few weeks and months on how to um, promote our organization and how to reach our community when we physically are not able to, to do so. So again, there's that virtual event guide on the blog. Um, we just got, we've got more, we've got virtual event platform options, suggestions, and along with a little more in-depth information on how to promote those, so. A current events, um, I know are very stressful and for many across the globe, they're just, you know, downright heartbreaking. Um, I know that many of us, we just want things to go back to the way they were as soon as possible. But unfortunately, that may not be, um, well, that's not our present. So um, I know at during times of crisis, um, it, it, we we do have to kind of kind of ground and balance and and figure out to we have to pivot and figure out a new strategy for moving moving ahead. So I commend you all for you know taking such such a step as you are today um, and being so open minded and and uh, in in your strategy pivot. So when we're thinking about how our organization can adapt during these uncertain times, adopting a more digital strategy, it can help us stay in contact with our community, with our customers, with our donors, and being agile in our approach will help our organizations be more resilient, a quality that is truly vital to the sustainability um, of our organizations during these challenging times. 
So if you don't prepare to succeed, then you are preparing to fail. Um, kind of a synopsis of the four key ways your organization can prepare for success is first focus on cultivating effective leadership within your organization. And it starts with you. Um, challenging times like these, they have the potential to put a lot of pressure on organizational leaders and they require a leadership approach that is truly people centered and effective. Uh, we want to prioritize the development of a human centric digitally facilitated outreach strategy. Technology is not a cure all for everything that your organization is currently facing and will be facing in the months to come. Uh, companies are going to tell you that their cutting edge software can fix all of your organization's problems, but that's simply not true. Uh, humans, not technology, uh, should remain the focus of your digital outreach strategy. So I would encourage you to not lose sight of people, your team, and the people that you serve uh, during all of this. Pandemics and similar times of crisis, they necessitate that organizations modify their social media content strategy. Everything posted should be evaluated and reevaluated for relevancy in light of the current events. Um, organizations often have very large social media reaches and should consider the potential impacts of their content on communities that they, you know, that are currently, um, currently facing a potentially life-threatening crisis. And then finally, consider integrating virtual events into your organization's outreach efforts. Just because the in-person events were canceled doesn't mean that your event can't go on. It just needs to be modified for a virtual format. Um, you know, the, your target market is experiencing the same thing you are. Um, they, they will be compassionate. They will be more willing to, to adjust uh, during this time. Uh, so, you know, capitalize on that and, and, and try to find ways that you can connect with your community, with your, your, you know, your clients, your constituents, your donors through digital strategy. Um, don't just, now is not the time to just go silent. Uh, we want to stay in contact. We want to offer connection opportunities and virtual events are an awesome opportunity to do that. So Becker Digital is here for you. Um, this year is going to be tough. There's going to be a lot of pivoting, a lot of change, a lot of revision, and most people don't, you know, aren't, don't really like that. Um, if your organization is looking for a team of consultants to help you navigate what lies ahead and develop a digital strategy that strengthens connections, we're your agency. Uh, please reach out to us with any questions. Our contact information is listed below and will be in the email that you'll get shortly with the webinar recording. Um, we'd be happy to schedule a call to discuss your organization and the challenges that it's currently facing and work with you to find actionable solutions that can be readily implemented. So while change is always difficult, um, we can help you overcome these challenges and succeed in a sustainable way. And with that, this concludes our webinar. Thank you all so much for attending. And remember, together we can get through this.